This video is intended to be a supplement for the building student input into your syllabus workshop. I will be using Google Docs as a platform to demonstrate how and where in your syllabus you can leave open spaces for student input. This is intended as a guide. Feel free to explore and experiment with other technologies. I like Google Docs because you can edit who you share the doc with. You can add specific people using email addresses, or you can send a link and allow users to view, comment, or edit. You can also restrict the doc if need be. First, you'd want to gather anything you need in an empty doc and organize it. For the purpose of this video, I will use a syllabus from a summer course I taught at CUNY. Create headers for your individual class information. You can write the course title and course number, your name, your email address, the semester dates, and your available office hours. Then you'll want to add a course description or an introduction to your course. Some folks like to add course objectives. Here is where you can put what you expect learners will gain from the course. Another important section is the course policies. It's here that a lot of folks like to put required language. This can include information on plagiarism, accommodations for students with different abilities, and accommodations for students who need absences due to religious beliefs. Other sections for your syllabus can include the course requirements. This is often where people put what assignments are required of their students and how they expect students to participate in the class. Then there is often a space for the course breakdown where folks can add what percentage of each requirement counts for what. I like to also add what numerical value equals what letter grade. If you are confused or unsure about any of this information, you can always email the department head where you are scheduled to teach for the required information on your syllabus. The next section I like to add is the schedule of classes and finally any important dates. You can find important dates on college websites. These include dates like the last day to withdraw, when students can request a pass-fail, and any dates that might be different for the college. For example, oftentimes to accommodate for holidays, CUNY will change a random Monday to a Wednesday. These dates are important for you and your students to know. Now that you've organized your syllabus, I will begin copy-pasting these specific sections. I'll start with the general course information using an old syllabus as a template. In the course objectives, I like to be able to leave open space for students to actually tell me what they would like to learn. Course policies is another section where you can ask for student input. In all of my courses, I like to add a section on undocumented students, and I also like to be very clear on what I expect in the format in terms of written assignments. This sample syllabus is based on a syllabus in which I try to experiment by giving my students a somewhat blank syllabus. At first, they seemed a little bit overwhelmed, but we got through it and had a great course. The majority of the sections in which I allowed the students to experiment and collaborate with me were in the schedule of classes and in the weighted breakdown for their assignments. By the end of the first week, we all decided that the course breakdown would be this. The schedule of classes I provided with them on the first day looked something like this. As you can see, most of the weeks were blank completely. I had set up week one to introduce them into how we could build the syllabus together and most of those classes were spent on asking them to participate and research in the readings they would like to engage 
for the materials that they would like to engage and the topics that they would like to discuss for the following weeks. Of course, I scheduled the final week to focus on final projects. These important dates were copy-pasted from the Brooklyn College website. These dates contain important information for students. By the end of the first week, our schedule of classes went from looking like this to looking like this. One of the assignments for the course required students to research open accessible information and sources for our course. We then collectively came up with the topics we would discuss, and I made sure that they pertain to the course requirements. By the end of the first week, we had a fully fleshed out course in which students had greatly contributed to the requirements of the course, specifically in the areas of what we would be reading and engaging and what the topics would be for the course. And there you have it, a base syllabus that you can save as a template updating the dates or other sections as your course shifts. This base syllabus will determine how much your syllabus is open for collaboration, so feel free to experiment leaving different sections open. Remember, the goal is not to overwhelm learners, but to invite them to be collaborators and understand what it is they hope to get out of the course. Not everyone will be responsive or enthusiastic. In my experience, providing some structure and being flexible works best.